Hi guys, I'm Alicia. Welcome back to Goodbye Greens. And today we are going to be making meat sauce and spaghetti squash. So for our ingredients, we have a spaghetti squash. This is a, probably about an average size. Um, most spaghetti squashes are around this size. You don't find ones that are much smaller or much larger. So um, grass-fed uh, ground beef, some salt, we have some uh, garlic cloves again, a red onion that we're going to dice, um, crushed tomatoes, this is a large can, a 28 ounce can, also a small can, six ounce can of tomato paste, some beef broth, um, olive oil, I have a giant olive oil, so yeah. Um, for seasonings, we have some oregano, dried oregano, some uh, garlic powder. This is going to be used for the spaghetti squash, not for the meat sauce. Uh, some dried fennel seed and also basil. Uh, we're going to throw a couple bay leaves in while it's simmering. And then at the very end, uh, we're going to add some fresh parsley for the meat sauce. So let's get started. Okay, so we have a Dutch oven that is over about medium high heat with uh, two to three tablespoons of olive oil. So the first thing we want to do is saute our uh, red onion that we have diced. You can just add that in. You can hear that sizzle. You definitely want to make sure once you uh, turn your pan on and add your olive oil that you let it uh, heat up for at least three to four minutes, especially Dutch ovens. Um, one of the great things about them is that they retain their heat really well, but it does take a few minutes to actually heat up, probably a little longer than just a, a plain skillet. So you're going to want to saute these onions for about three to five minutes until they start softening and get a little bit of color on them, and then you are going to add your garlic. So we'll be right back. Okay, so it's been about three to four minutes. We can kind of move these onions around a little bit more. Um, you can tell that they are starting to soften, getting a little bit of color on them, and they'll continue to get color on them as we as we keep cooking. So we're going to add our garlic that we've minced. This is four cloves of garlic, and we're just going to keep uh, moving the uh, the onion and garlic mixture around so that the garlic doesn't burn. You want to let the garlic cook for probably about 90 seconds or so, and then we're going to add in our grass-fed ground beef uh, to begin browning. Okay, so it's been about a minute or two, so we're going to add in our ground beef. You just kind of want to break this up a little bit. kind of into small pieces. The, the meat will continue to kind of break up as it, as it cooks and as it simmers. Um, but you really want to kind of do your best to get it into about same size pieces so that it can cook evenly, brown evenly. So after a few minutes, you can see that the beef is almost all the way cooked through. So now we're going to add our spices and our seasonings. So we'll add a little bit of salt, some kosher salt. We will add our um, oregano, our basil, and our fennel. And then we're also going to add our tomato paste right now. And the reason that we're adding the tomato paste only and not the crushed tomatoes yet is that we want to almost kind of toast the tomato paste a little bit. So the easiest thing I have found is to kind of just use a butter knife and scrape around the sides of the tomato paste can. And usually you'll end up getting it pretty much all out. So we're going to stir and combine all this. Thank you. 
We're gonna continue to let it cook for about two to three minutes until you can kind of really smell the tomato paste beginning to toast. And the best way that I can explain that um, is it almost kind of smells like pizza cooking if um, you just, you can get that scent. So you can sort of just mix it around. Um, if the bottom of your pan looks like it's beginning to kind of form a little bit of a crust like on the bottom right here, uh, that's perfectly fine. We're actually going to deglaze with a little bit of the beef broth. So you can kind of just let this, you can stir it around and then just kind of let it sit for a little bit. Once it kind of begins to cook for a little while, you can stir it around again in 60 seconds or so. Uh, you just don't want to let it burn. That's the biggest, uh, um, the biggest thing you need to make sure. Okay, so after a few minutes, if you kind of move the meat sauce around, you can see that some of the little bits are sticking to the bottom of the pan. So what we're going to do is use a little bit of beef broth to deglaze it and scrape up all that good flavor. So you just want to add a little bit um, at a time and then kind of just use a, the best thing to use is a, a wooden spoon or spatula and you can kind of just go around and scrape up any of the little bits that are toasting on the bottom. So once you have all of those scraped up, you're going to add your can of crushed tomatoes, including all the juice. You just want to dump the entire can right in there. Make sure you get everything out. And then also the rest of your beef broth. And then you just want to carefully stir. Don't stir too fast because you will get tomato and beef broth and beef everywhere. Uh, just carefully stir it around until it kind of all comes together. Then you want to add two bay leaves. You can just kind of nestle those guys in there. You want to cover your pot and you're going to simmer it for an hour. But first you want to bring it up to um, almost like a, a boil. So you can leave your heat at about medium high for a couple minutes uh, to warm up that um, beef broth and the crushed tomatoes. And then you're going to turn it down to, uh, to low and simmer for, for one hour. So we'll be back in an hour. So while your sauce is simmering, we want to prepare our spaghetti squash. So we're going to cut this in half. Now, you have to be really, really careful when you cut it. Um, I usually just put my knife straight into the middle and kind of start wiggling it around till I reach the bottom. Um, you definitely want to have a sharp knife for this, but depending on how tough the exterior is, it might take a little bit of effort. Um, so you can pretty easily break it open. It kind of looks like a pumpkin inside if you've never seen a spaghetti squash. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to scoop out all of the um, flesh that's inside that's just kind of like the stringy stuff and the seeds so that you're just left with what basically looks like a hollowed out pumpkin. So after you've hollowed them out, you're going to spray them with a little bit of olive oil on the inside. Season them with some kosher salt. Just kind of get into all the little crevices and also some garlic um, powder. So you can just kind of sprinkle that over as well. This will just add a little bit of extra flavor. So what I always do is take a baking sheet and line it with, um, with foil. This way it provides really easy cleanup. You can also spray a little bit of olive oil on the foil um, just to make sure that the spaghetti squash doesn't stick. So what you want to do is take your spaghetti squash and place it um, flesh side down onto the pan. And then you're going to take this and put it into a preheated 375 degree oven for about 45 minutes. 
So it's been about 45 minutes and we've taken our squash out of the oven. So um, the best thing that you wanna do is if you have a silicone or a uh, oven mitt that can be washed, the easiest thing, this is uh, one that we have, the easiest thing is to use this in order to kind of flip your squash over. Um, so you can kind of use a fork and kind of pick it um, up like this. Whoop, lots of steam. As you can see a little bit around the edge, you're gonna have some browning. Um, it doesn't need to be all the way brown, so certainly don't worry about that. You don't want it to start turning black, uh, which is why you only wanna keep it in the oven for about 45 minutes. So uh, really carefully, you can either hold um, your squash if you have an oven mitt that's kind of like this, or you can um, let it cool for a couple more minutes until you can kind of lightly touch it around the sides. Um, this has been out of the oven probably only about two minutes, and as long as I don't grip it tightly, it's not super hot. But what you're gonna do is take a fork, and you're actually just going to scrape the sides and um, kind of across the bottom. And as you can see, you literally have strands of uh, squash that come out that if you looked at it from far away, it really would look like spaghetti. So you're just gonna very carefully kind of just uh, scrape around the sides. And as you kind of have a good amount of, uh, of squash that is built up, you can kind of just take that and carefully scoop it into a bowl. So I have a, I have a bowl here and you can just kind of uh, take it and scoop it straight into the bowl um, to leave yourself with a little bit more room to continue to scrape out the squash. So I'm going to finish that and we will be back in a second. Okay, so now we have two hollowed out spaghetti squashes as you can see and a nice big bowl of shredded spaghetti squash. So let's check on our meat sauce. So for the last 15 minutes of the simmering, I've left the lid um, halfway on, halfway off to kind of allow the sauce to thicken up a little bit. So you can stir it around a little, kind of making sure that nothing um, stuck to the bottom. And then as you can see, it's probably about as thick as, as a chili. It's, it's not... Uh, too thin, too thick. If you want it to be thicker, you can just allow it to simmer uh, longer with the lid off. If you want it to be thinner, you can either just continue to simmer it with the lid on the entire hour, or you can thin it out with a little bit of beef broth. So with our spaghetti squash that we've uh, cooked and shredded, you can just add a little bit to a bowl. And then just pour a nice ladle full of this meat sauce uh, right over the top. So here it is, spaghetti squash with meat sauce. Enjoy.